My name is Michael Waddington, and I'm a court martial defense attorney. MRE 412, Military Rule of Evidence 412, is a rule that protects the privacy of alleged victims. So, for example, if you had a dating relationship with a woman, and it was consensual and everything was great, and then you broke up with her on her birthday, and dumped her, and never spoke to her again, and then six weeks later, after trying to get back with you, she falsely accuses you of sexual assault. You may be coming to your lawyer and saying, hey, we had consensual sex all the time, even on the day that she's accusing me of raping her. Is that admissible? You would think it would be, but it's not necessarily admissible. In order to get the evidence of your pre-existing relationship with this ex-girlfriend into evidence, then you have to fight an uphill battle. So what you would have to do is, through your attorneys, you would have to lay out all of the prior sexual acts between you and your ex-girlfriend, the alleged victim. You would have to explain them in detail, why they're relevant and why they're admissible as an exception to the policy. The policy on its face bans and bars all prior sexual behaviors of a victim in any sexual assault case, unless you can fit it in under an exception. And this is something that a skilled lawyer can do. You have to come up with creative ways to get this in. I'll give you a couple reasons that it may be admissible. And it's not automatically admissible. Again, a lot of people call us and say, hey, we had an ongoing sexual relationship. It's admissible. The day of, she sent me nudes, nude photos of herself and said, come and have sex with me. That is, on its face, not admissible to help you. It sounds outrageous, but here's what you need to do. You need to have a lawyer come up with the ways to get that evidence admissible. For example, evidence of a pre-existing sexual relationship may be admissible if you can tie it to one of the exceptions, such as to show that there's a mistake of fact as to consent. All of your sexual relationships will not be admissible, but some of them may be if the judge finds that they fit in. There are some judges that won't let any of it in, by the way. Another one is to show injuries. So for example, if someone says, oh, I was sexually assaulted, look at the injuries I have, and then you know that they had sex with someone else since then or before the examination, the sex assault, assault examination, that may be admissible for the limited purpose of showing that someone else may have caused the injuries. And there's several other exceptions that are out there that you may be able to, to get this evidence admissible under, uh, but the general rule is a rule of exclusion, meaning that the prior sexual behavior of the alleged victim is excluded outright until you can prove otherwise. So if you have selfies or a prior sexual history with an alleged victim, you need to have a lawyer that knows how to get this evidence admissible as much of it as possible without getting shut down by the judge. Otherwise, you can find yourself in jail because the jury only got to hear about 50% of the truth of what happened in your situation. It's not fair, but it's the law. And that's a reason why you need to have someone who knows what they're doing and who has done this over and over again on your side.